Welcome everyone to another lesson on Khadija Academy. Before we start this lesson, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, and the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now let's go and start our lesson. First, let's discuss the Clark transform. Clark transform is used to convert a three-phase system three phase a b c into two phase system alpha beta and it's called stationary frame and i will explain why it's called stationary frame so alpha beta here two phase how can i do this simply you will draw this figure so you'll see that we have a b and c shifted by 120 degrees from each other okay now we will assume that we have two phase system alpha and beta the angle between them is 90 degrees so where is alpha alpha will be on phase a so this is alpha and beta will be at a 90 degree from it which is here okay great so what i'm going to do is that you will remember that this resultant vector resultant vector fr right what I would like to do is that I would like to convert the resultant vector VR FR was equal to phase A plus phase B plus phase C and their magnitudes of course with their magnitudes now I would like to convert it from this form to another form V alpha plus J V beta or which is equal to V alpha and the angle zero j is 90 degrees so plus v beta and the angle 90 degrees so i convert it from three vectors into two vectors which is alpha and the angle here zero and beta which is has an angle 90 degrees okay so how can i do this simply all you have to do is that you will get a b and C their projection on beta and alpha okay so let's just extend this line like this and extend this line like this and let's type it so for example for um, phase A phase A is on alpha right so VA is only have one component in the direction of alpha in direction of beta it will be zero so let's type our matrix so we have v alpha and we have v beta which i would like to get from the three phase system va vb and vc so number one for alpha and for beta for a for va v alpha va is equal to one right because all of a is in the direction of alpha right what about beta it has a zero component in beta so what you will see in this matrix will v alpha will be one multiplied by v a plus component which we didn't get multiplied by v b plus a component multiplied by v c and v beta the same zero multiplied by v it does not have any component in uh, VA does not have any component in direction of beta which is this one and the others will be obtained right now what about VB so if you look at VB here here this is negative alpha and this is negative beta okay so what about beta here you can see that this is 90 degrees right what about this angle what will be the value of this angle this angle will be all of this 120 degrees right so 90 plus 30 degrees so this angle alone 30 degrees so if i would like to get the component component here will be vb uh, cosine 30 degrees and here it will be vb sine 30 degrees right 
So here, this is in the negative direction. This is in the positive direction. This is in the negative direction. So for VB, what about alpha? VB sine 30, which is half VB, half, but with a negative sign, right? Why with a negative sign? Because as you can see, the projection in the, in the negative direction. So it will be half. So you will see that V alpha equal to negative half VB, right? Because it is in the negative direction. What about this one? Cosine 30 is root 3 over 2. So root 3 over 2 in the positive direction. So you can see that V beta for VB root 3 over 2 multiplied by VB. What about VC? VC here is the same idea. As you can see that this angle here will be also um, 30 degrees, right? You can see that all of this is 180 degrees minus 120 gives us 60 minus 30 degrees gives us 30 degrees, which is this angle. Now the projection will be in this direction will be VC cosine 30 degrees and in this direction VC sine 30 degrees, right? So for alpha, you can see that the component VC, VC is sine 30, which is half. But is it in the negative or in the positive? It is in the negative direction. So it will be negative half VC. What about this component? You can see here cosine 30, VC cosine 30 in the negative direction too. Cosine 30 is root 3 over 2 and it is negative 2. So what you will find that in order to transform from ABC to V alpha, you will take ABC and multiply it by this matrix here, which is this one exactly, right? As you can see here, 1, negative half, negative half, 0, root 3 over 2, negative root 3 over 2, V A, V B, and V C. Now for this, I will explain it right now. So again, if you look at this equation, you can something that V alpha is equal to 1 multiplied by V A minus half V B minus half V C, which are the three elements V A in the direction of alpha, negative half V B, negative half V C, okay? Similarly for V beta. I hope you get this idea. So what you will see right now is that we have this coefficient root 2 over 3. So we understand how to transform from a three phase system into uh, alpha beta by this uh, projection of ABC on alpha beta frames or alpha, alpha beta frame. Now you will see that we have a coefficient here. What does this constant have to do? This constant can be root 2 over 3 or 2 over 3. If we are using root 2 over 3, it means we are talking about a power invariant transformation. Okay. If we are talking about 2 over 3, it means we are dealing with a power variant transformation. I know you will ask, what does this even mean? Power variant, it means that the power S before transformation is not equal to S after transformation. Before or ABC not equal to alpha beta we have to adjust the equation of alpha beta and you'll find that the power variant here means that the magnitude of alpha is similar as v max of the phase v a max or v b max they are all similar to each other so it is equal to v alpha and v beta 
are equal to the maximum or peak voltage okay they are equal to each other that's why this transformation by using two over three is called the amplitude transformation or amplitude preservation uh, transformation so alpha before uh, uh, s before will not be equal to s after that's why it's called power variant for alpha beta here it is called uh, or it is in this case it is uh, for root 2 over 3 it is power invariant mean that s before transformation is equal to s after transformation however the magnitude itself for the phases is not equal to each other not alpha not equal to the phase voltage okay so each one has its advantages for example if i'm controlling if my control system deals with controlling active power and reactive power then in this case i'm going to use the power invariant if my own system deals with controlling voltages vd v v uh, q as we will see uh, direct access quadrature access um dealing with id and iq then you will use power variant and this is the standard one okay now what does power before and after what is their equations as you know that in abc system in abc system the apparent power or complex power to be more specific complex power of abc is equal to v i conjugate right so we have voltage current conjugate multiplied by three since we have a three phase system so three multiplied by the phase voltage multiplied by i conjugate for an alpha beta frame the apparent power in alpha beta frame will be also v multiplied by i conjugate and in this case it will be like this voltage will be v alpha plus j v beta and for i or the current it will be i alpha but since we are dealing with the conjugate of the current it will be negative j i beta okay so we have v multiplied by i conjugate the complex power that we already know from basics of electric circuits v alpha plus j v beta representation for the voltage vector multiplied by i alpha minus j i beta which is representation of the i vector but conjugate since we are dealing with the three phase complex power or uh, sorry uh, the complex power in general so if you did this calculation you will find that v alpha multiplied by i alpha okay and you'll find that we have this term j v beta minus j i beta j multiplied by j is j square which is negative one multiplied by negative one plus one it will be multiplied by another negative one so it will be positive so it will be positive v beta i beta for this one j v beta and i uh, alpha it will be here plus j v beta multiplied by i alpha so it will be v beta i alpha and um, here will be also negative j multiplied by v alpha so it will be uh, minus v alpha i beta so again j with i i alpha v beta i alpha v beta and v alpha with a negative i beta so it will be negative v alpha i beta so this representing the active power in the uh, alpha beta frame and thus representing reactive power in alpha beta frame if you use this transformation power variant you will find that this active power for example this active power v alpha i alpha plus v beta i beta you will find that it is not equal to the active power of a three-phase system which is 3 v rms i rms cosine theta which is a power factor this representing active 
power in three phase and thus representing active power in two phase or alpha beta frame you will find that by calculating they will not be equal to each other why because we used this type of transformation or 2 over 3 however if you decided to use root 2 over 3 which is the power invariant transformation you will find that this power will be equal to this power okay okay so we don't worry we will have an example which will show with you that what if i used this transformation what will be the values of voltages and current and in this case what will be the value of power and how uh, how to prove that they are equal to each other okay so i hope you now get the idea of the difference between power invariant and power variant now you will see that here we have alpha beta after uh, transformation you will see that alpha and beta are stationary they are called stationary because they are fixed in the two axes you can see that alpha has always a zero angle and beta has always 90 degrees but the difference is that their magnitude are changing with time and you can see the same vector vbcc which is the resultant vector of the three phase rotating vector rotating space vector is still existing and it is divided into two components one in alpha and one in beta as it rotates in our space the problem of alpha beta frame as you can see here is that we will gen we will have a generated sine wave a sine and cosine or two sine waves shifted by a 90 degrees the presence of this variation uh, makes it hard to control this control system will be much harder why because we are dealing with sine and cosine waves that's why there is another transformation which is called the park transformation that takes alpha beta and converts it into dq thank you for watching this lesson i would like to invite you to our academy khadija academy premium uh, membership which will help you learn more about electrical engineering in this academy or in the academy membership you will find that we'll have more than 100 uh, courses in mass electrical engineering basics uh, power engineering uh, career uh, preparations for example we have electrical design we have courses on electric circuits power electronics etab matlab solar energy wave energy wind energy and much more you can uh, join our membership for just uh, a small fee per month or you can just have a lifetime access in which you will get all of current uh, courses and classes and you can have them forever and not only this but any any new course that will be created you will be able to uh, watch it for completely free so what are the classes that i will learn in this membership you will find different classes in electric circuits you will find in uh, transformers magnetic circuits machines uh, power electronics uh, load estimation lighting design lightning also design earthing system cables uh, generators um, like current systems or low current systems uh, of grid design on grid design very very lot <laughs> lots of uh, classes and courses in different uh, topics